Welcome to Sex at 10. I'm Rebecca Rosenblatt, Certified Relationship and Sexuality Therapist and your host, here to answer your questions on all things intimate. Whether you're stuck in a relationship dilemma, have issues with your body, trust, trauma, addiction, or orientation, or just need a little help with turning up the heat in your bedroom, give us a shout at 1-800-968-7836 and let's chat. Everything's fair game. If you've thought about it, we can talk about it. Let's begin with a discussion on how to suss out whether or not someone's actually interested in you. And to help me with that, we're being joined by a world-class expert in the area, Duspina Aluwalia. Duspina is a professional matchmaker, dating coach, and the founder of Intersections Match, the only premium matchmaking and dating support firm in the US, Canada, and the UK for South Asian singles. Beyond that, she's been featured in the New York Times, San Jose Mercury News, Chicago Trib, Washington Post, and Entrepreneur Magazine, and she made the finalist list in Oprah's search for TV host. So indeed, we're very excited and honored to have her joining us to share her words of wisdom on a really important topic. Welcome to Spin at Sex at 10. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure, Rebecca. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Now, just being in a world of multiple choices, many people nowadays like to keep their options open, making it difficult for us to know how re how someone really feels about us, or for that matter, if you're just a placeholder. So I'm very excited that you'll be helping us solve that mystery tonight. Perhaps you could begin the discussion by expanding on why is sussing out someone's interest level important in the first place? Absolutely. So I believe in empowered dating uh -huh. and one of the tenets of empowered dating in my view is to know your relationship goals that is why why are you dating in the first place so if you're dating with the goal of finding a life partner as the singles I work with typically are then it's important to keep three things in mind one don't waste any time in dead-end relationships. Mm -hmm. Two, don't get emotionally invested in a relationship with someone who's not invested in you. And three, any time you're spending with Mr. or Ms. Wrong, you're not fully available for Mr. or Ms. Right. How true, really important points. And I like the, especially the point about if they're not invested in you, you should be invested in them. Uh, I guess people can avoid codependent relationships because that's it in a nutshell, where one person is more invested than the other. And I also like that you're saying that, you know, if you're wasting your time with someone where it's not gonna happen, you are wasting the time that you could be spending in meeting other people. Viewers, if you're unsure whether or not your dating interest is truly interested or just playing games, Give us a shout right now and chat with Despina. Despina, given how important it is not to invest time and emotional energy in dead end relationships, as you just said, should you ask him or her questions about their intentions during the first meeting or two early on? Well, that's a great question because, in my view, it is actually possible to be too efficient, right? Uh -huh. By wanting to know the ending of the story while you're still on the very first paragraph of the first page of a book. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, it's important to observe the person you're interested in over time and interaction uh -huh. versus just firing off direct questions on the first couple of dates. And why is that the case? Why am I saying that? Well, he or she themselves may not know what they think about you and your uh -huh. prospects for committed relationship in the first couple of dates. They may actually not have processed that themselves, right? And then he or she may just tell you what they think you want to hear. Uh -huh. right? Which is not that hard to figure out. Uh -huh. um, to another reason why it's really better to observe over time and let interaction and time reveal is that people's actions, typically, typically they reveal far more than their mere words will. Absolutely. Right? So by mm -hmm. just asking for those mere words, you're really short-circuiting something that could be promising. Uh -huh. So I do recommend letting time and interaction take some course. 
That's that's actually really brilliant because some people um, they do they want to know just right at get go if this person is the one and how can you know that early on uh, and the other person may not like you said know how they feel about us and, and just kind of observing it over time. Um, I've known some people who've just at date number one they've said okay this is what I need this is what I won't tolerate and just read practically well not read but uh, recited a list of things that they need to have the list of things that they're not going to tolerate they're deal breakers and a friend of mine was on a date like that and he says I just looked at the woman and said how attractive and walked yeah. away uh, yeah. so very important yeah. to give uh, give them a chance to get to know us and it would also imply if we are rushing things that we're told them everything about ourselves and then again you know what's left where are you going next so I really like those uh, pieces of really valuable advice viewers if you have questions of your own for Jaspina grab that phone and take advantage of this amazing opportunity to chat with her Jaspina like you I'm a big fan of observing behavior versus listening to the words because of course that tells us most so could you please talk about what kinds of things one should be observing over time next Sure. So I found that the observations to make to gauge if he or she's really interested can you largely be grouped into five general categories uh -huh. and let's call them by the acronym PIC, as in pick wisely. I like okay, that. Now, great. Now before I launch into picking wisely, um, you know I think it's very important to keep in mind that context is key uh -huh. and there are in fact exceptions to every rule right? right so i don't want anyone to um to you know listen to these in absence of understanding the context of any given right. given situation uh, but that says let's jump in to pick all right so p p stands for prioritize you know as in does he or she prioritize you uh -huh. so now rebecca what does that look like um, I tell people to ask yourself, does he or she, do they make time for you, right? Mm -hmm. Are they making effort? For example, is he or she going out of his or her way for you? Or is that person only making last minute plans with you? So that's P, that's prioritize. That's so and important because uh, so many yeah. people, uh, you know, they'll call in or they'll write me or even some of my clients, they'll say, the person isn't texting me back, they're not responding mm -hmm. to my calls. And I'm thinking, well, they're being pretty clear here. You're not important to them. Yeah. But for some reason, people don't clue into that. So great point. What's your next point? Okay, so in pick, we've got the next one is I. So I stands for integrate. You know, as in, does he or she integrate you into, uh -huh. into the other areas of his or her life? So again, what does that look like? So ask yourself, does he or she introduce you to others in his, in his or her life? Right. Um, tell friends and family about you. Include you in his or her life. You know, weekend activities versus just discrete times on weekends, right? Right. Does he or she engage in communications between those dates? Uh, beyond just, you know, scheduling dates, actually having conversations between them. Um, does he or she share what's going on in his or her life with you? Right. Um, does he or she maintain physical and emotional distance? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, withholding personal details of their life. Um, what about showing affection when you're alone versus right. in front of others? Right? If they're only reserving any form of affection uh -huh. for just two of you when you're alone uh -huh. that could say something about their willingness to let others know you together. Um, it what feels about sneaky almost, doesn't it, uh, Jaspina? Because um, I, I guess this is sure. a way of sussing out maybe if someone is in a committed relationship, uh, someone married who is pretending to be single, because if they are keeping the rest of their life secret from you, uh, the re huge red flags go up. But again, you know, it's good that you're mentioning this point because obvious as it feels, lots of people don't even think about that. Absolutely. I think there are a lot of reasons, but exactly. People just, they justify a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh -huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. The lies we tell ourselves, I think, are some of the biggest lies. So you're right. It, people try to justify because they want this thing to work. Uh, so they kind of look the other way. They wear blinders. What's your next point? Yeah. The C. 
first All C. right. <laughs> so we actually have two C's. So the first C is consistent, right? Uh -huh. So if he or she consistent in both their words and actions, so, you know, what does that look like? Again, ask yourself, do they show up when they say they will? Uh -huh. Do they follow through with the commitments they're making? Um, do they keep their agreements with you? Are they flaking out at the last minute? Um, do they say they're actually okay with you dating others? It's surprising. People actually let you know things, right? And that they're like, oh, you know, they're actually okay with the fact that you're seeing others. Uh -huh. Again, that helps do a lot about the place they see you having in their life, right? Yeah. So C, again, is consistent. And then um, we have another C, uh -huh. right? Um, C is cares. What do I mean by that? Cares is, does he or she care to know your thoughts, your opinions, your feelings? Uh -huh. Again, what does that look like? Really, literally that. Ask yourself, you know, does he or she seek your perspective, your opinion on uh -huh. things? Does he actually or she actually want to know? Or is it all kind of superficial and not really seeking your thoughts, your opinions? Uh -huh. So cares. So Absolutely. they show that uh, you matter to them and they care enough to consult with you or just even run things by you because it's important to them uh, that you're on the same page. And it, what people don't realize is just sharing, it doesn't necessarily mean we'll always agree, but it's still nice to be included, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, what's interesting is when you don't agree, how is he reacting to that, right? Right. So they, again, so it's um, care, absolutely, extremely important. Uh -huh. um, and pick has to end with a K. Uh -huh. It doesn't actually, but we're going to say it does. So we have P-I-C-C-K. Uh -huh. And K is, what, what we're saying for K is, K is keep. So what do we mean by keep? Does he or she keep you in mind in both the present, about the present tense, and mm -hmm. for the future? So what does that look like? Again, you ask yourself, do, um, does that person modify their behavior, their routines to accommodate you, uh -huh. all right? Do they think about you when they're making big decisions? Um, do they act, do they talk in a way that includes you in their vision of their future? Do they talk about the future at all with you? Do they check in with you before making plans with others, right? That's a um, huge yeah. one, uh, the, yeah. you know, about the future, because people who are sort of, you know, uh, making plans or dropping little hints, you know, when we travel here or they're literally they're sort of announcing, letting it slip that they are planning a future with you and they see you as a part of your life down the road. That looks very different from somebody who never mentions anything like that, who doesn't even mention, you know, uh, you meeting their family at Christmas or anything like that. So I think that's that's a really brilliant one to be able to understand wh where they're at. Absolutely. Um, keeping you in mind and exactly what you said. I mean, their vision of the future. Is it, would it be reasonable to think it includes you, right? Uh -huh. And you're looking to see that. And now you see how you can't, these things would be premature on a first date, right? right. But as time and interaction unravels, you really do want to see these things um, revealing themselves. Absolutely. I mean, that's really, really great advice. Um, now, you have lots and lots of clips and stuff, too, and very unique matchmaking concept. We're going to be looking at one of your clips later on the show. But I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what's different in your matchmaking, because uh, you do a lot of, you suss out for people, you vet people in an incredible way. So maybe you could just give us a, a brief um, description of what that's all about. Absolutely. So what I'd like to say is, since we are working with the predominantly the South Asian demographics, so uh -huh. predominantly Indian, Indians in Canada, the UK, uh -huh. and America, um, what I'd like to say is we are really the go-to for people who are looking for committed relationships uh -huh. and they don't want to go the arranged marriage route. Not that there is anything wrong with the arranged marriage route. It's just that they are looking as an alternative. They are looking to get to know someone over some time and interaction uh -huh. um, prior to making that commitment. So really, that's where we fit in. We are working with people from their 20s to their 60s plus. 
The wow, woman, was, so the so whole gamut. Now, uh, the whole gamut. Justina, I want to yeah. ask you a couple more questions. So I hope you can stick around after the break. I don't want to run off. So we'll be right back. Keep your calls coming and let's discuss sex, relationships, romance, or whatever else rocks your boat. And keep it locked in Rogers TV because we have lots more great stuff still ahead, including your calls. So pick up that phone and call so we can connect. <laughs> Not a mic, I don't want to buy.